Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. How's everybody doing? Doing good. I got my brand new paints. Yay. Yes, hey, I got some too. You did. Hey. Oh, wait. Wait, I gotta I gotta do it too. Yay! Yay! I got so many paints, I don't know what to do with them all. Uh, yeah. You can never have too many point paints. I don't want to show you my desk. Like this is overflow. No, oh, no. Like I, I have the Vallejo thing that does this around my desk. Oh no. There's paint in all of it. So lots of it. So what's everyone doing? Working on? Uh finishing up painting these walls for a friend of mine. I'm on the last big wall. So that is my last project. And then I will move on to building another 40 thralls. I can. I like those walls. Do you? Those yeah. are really snazzy. Mm. I still want to ask me, like, why are you putting so much work into it? I'm like, because that's, I want to keep a level of painting. Like, I don't want to da downgrade. Oh, it's just walls. So I'm just going to do blah, blah, blah. And that's it. No, I'm going to paint it like I would paint anything at a tier two, tier three level. So when it's on the table, people are like, oh my God, that's amazing. And if you would like to know our tier levels, you can catch last week's show where we discussed our tier levels. Yeah. Or uh, you guys can, um, something I'll be going into a little later, uh, I'll be talking about my tier levels at least uh, tomorrow with a live stream show for uh, my 30 day challenge, yeah. which is what I have been working on. Um, my 30 day challenge since I did not realize that as a member of FNP Wargamers that I need to have a fully painted army available at all times. And I sold my Adeptus Custodes. That were fully yeah. painted and nicely painted. Yes. I thank you. Nicely, amazingly painted. I don't, oh, I don't know that. But they I I think they were very well painted. Yeah, you know, toot my own horn there. They were they were really good because the blue So you know painting is good when you actually like your own painting. Yeah. Because we are our biggest critic. Yeah. True. What were you saying, Ski? I don't know. The Custodes, the way you did with the blue and the copper gold look, it, it turned out really like I saw the Custodes there at LVO. There were some really nice ones and there were some mediocre and some <laughs> under quality ones. Yeah. Yours was way like tier three, four level of the Custodes because it's hard. Because the gold and the copper, it's really yeah. hard. Unless it was non metallic, then that would be like a tier five. <laughs> Like, yeah, but it was really well done. No matter if you want to give yourself enough credit or not, it was, it looked really good. Yeah. Well, the only thing I, I did not like about it is I used this amazing um, clear coat that it actually got rid of any of the brush strokes and all the little micro fractures or, I mean, just blended all the colors. It, it's basically like the old magic mud for those of you that remember magic mud. Yep. Um, and it was the testers um, clear or the dull coat. Yep. This testers dull coat. Let's see. If, um, Dude, okay. dull coat is amazing. This is the most amazing uh, clear spray that I've ever come across. I don't know why. I, bought, I, I bought four cans of it when I saw it at uh, Hobby Lobby. I didn't even hesitate. I just grabbed them all. Dude, it's hard uh, to get at Hobby Lobby. Yeah. Was still out. yeah. Uh, so if you get a chance. It's Tester's Dull Coat, D U L L C O. -T. So it, what it does is it flattens everything and it makes the colors pop. With one exception. <laughs> when you have an all gold and copper army, it uh, drops the, um, the, the sheen or the shine down a notch. Um, it's it's a very subtle thing, but I, I picked up on it because I recognized a lot of the luster that I had in it was just gone. So I went back and had to add some extra highlights of silver onto the gold just to kind of make it pop a little bit more. But I'll be using that dull coat for my 30-day project, which is, according to the poll that I had up on the Facebook page, I'll be doing um, 65 Space Marines all from the Shadow Spear box. Now I'm going to be building, converting, and basing, and painting, excuse me, painting in 30 days, 65 minutes. 
Um, so it's going to be a bit of a challenge. I'm on, on day two right now, and I've got um, about half of the army built and with minor conversions, um, hit mainly like head swaps and stuff like that. But tomorrow at 8 p.m. on Facebook, since I can't seem to figure out Twitch correctly. Well, you don't need to do Twitch. It's the basically how I have it set up at the shop. Uh huh. Is when you start streaming is going to stream on both Twitch and uh, YouTube. Oh, well, then I need to figure out how to get the um, that overhead camera, the little V4K one, to work. See if it's plugged in. It, it was plugged in, but I, I have to, I, I and I downloaded the software. Well, we can talk about it afterwards. Yeah. Um, but it's, uh, it's okay. Um, well, we'll talk about that tomorrow. Anyways, so I'm going to be live streaming twice a week. Right now, it's just going to be Wednesdays at 8 p.m. And then Sundays, I think, at 6 or 7 p.m. Um, I'll get the calendar up. But so twice a week, I'll show you my progress. Um, and I got certain goals to meet. But basically, 30 days. I'm on day two right now. 30 days to build, convert, base, and paint 65 models. So and I'll show you my progress. And so everybody can kind of see and the, the other reason why I was doing that. And I'll explain it a little bit more on the show is uh, Warzone Houston is coming up in July. And we've been talking about it on the Facebook page and even on here. Hey, start getting your paint, your models painted. You know, uh, July is going to come up really fast. And I still have people going, oh, my gosh, I haven't even started painting with my army. You know, that army that they've had since January or December. So I'm going to show them a very clean, neat, and efficient way to um, build, paint, and base your army in 30 days. And I'm only, in reality, I'm only spending about, I think I'm going to be, calc I calculate about five to six hours a week actually spending on it. So that's pretty good. Yeah. So I'm hoping it'll really help some people learn it. And for me, this is like probably a tier two, maybe tier three. Tier three, uh, probably about my low end of tier three for me. It's so like a tier one painting it for me is like um, what some people would say is tabletop quality. Uh, so three color minimum and some basing. Um, that is like the absolute minimum. And if that's all you care about, and if you're going to a GT or a major or something like that, a convention, that's all you need. And if you're happy with that, Man, awesome. Congrats. Ski taught us on the show that tabletop quality is a bad word. Yes, I, I know. I, and I think it is. I mean, that's my opinion because the fact it, it, it sets that precedence of, of how do I explain this? I have a feeling and what I'm seeing and I'm thinking a lot of people are starting to realize that, you know, the sportsmanship and painting and hobbying is all one. And scores, when you go to GT, should represent all those in some way, shape or form. Um, and so there, I know there's people out there. I know we discussed this last week about, you know, people painting other people's armies and that's fine. Some people are just not artists, but give those people that painted your army credit and that's okay. Um, but at the same time, have the appreciation to get your stuff painted, go the, the extra mile because I know GTs out there that are starting to include paint scores. Yeah. So if you want a place, you got to have paint to. Yeah. Now, th like this year for Warzone Houston, we're not going to tie it in. It is going to be used as a tiebreaker. For 40K. For 40K. Yeah, I'm going to have all this cleared up on our FAQ page on warzonehouston.com. Um, okay, so instead of tabletop quality, my tier one is three color minimum and some sand or basic ba basing. Uh, that's not something that's... Um, for me, I can't play with that. That's not good enough for me. Now, if that's good enough for you, fantastic, awesome. But I'm always striving to build and paint better than before. So like, even after I'm done with this 30 day challenge, as you guys work away on your stuff right there, even after 30 day challenge, and I've got the army up and going and paid my penance for selling my army. Cool. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna turn back around and start cleaning up the models and improving upon what I've done. And so. 
and, and on a caveat though too is so your tier one right now is and i'm gonna i'm gonna use like a bar graph or like a little level graph here like your your tier one for you right at this moment or tier two we'll just say it's here after you get done painting models and you hold yourself to this standard of this tier eventually it's going to go to here normally while you paint and continue painting you will progress and keep progressing and then you're going to uphold a standard and your paint jobs are going to be great and you're not even going to realize it after a while mm -hmm. and that's yeah. why i can't wait i can't wait for that and i can't wait for it to see when you start some next because it's going to be aos and that's gonna be awesome oh i'm super stoked about and we're going to obviously talk about the aos stuff uh, with the adepticon review here in a moment but i'm really super excited about doing um did we talk we, we haven't adepticon was last weekend right mm -hmm. or last, yeah, okay yeah. Uh, I'm really super stoked. Um, I don't, you guys have no idea. Well, the people out there, you guys know, cause I was, I was like gushing and uh, I don't know, man. I think there were sparkles around me and perfume. I, I don't know. I was, uh, I'm super ecstatic about the uh, Slanesh release. Oh yeah. Gorgeous models too. Oh yeah. But you know, yeah. I'll, and I'll be going over to tomorrow. Um, I'll post it up on the Facebook page. Hey, Here's uh, how you can find me if I can't figure it out, or if I do figure it out and I'm I'm streaming on Twitch and um, YouTube, or if it ends up being on Facebook Live. One way or the other, I'm gonna be doing a show tomorrow for about an hour, hour and a half. Um, and I'll be just kind of going over e each episode, I guess you call it. Um, I'll be kind of going over uh, my thought process and what I'm doing, why I'm doing it and actually show you the techniques that i'm going through going over and so you can actually see it in practice and now some a lot of it is not going to be advanced techniques just because of the way that those models are built i'm not gonna be able to do some of the um because they don't have like the chest eagles or anything on their armor i'm not gonna be able to do some of that amazing uh, uh blending wet blending i was looking at doing or uh, some of the glazing so it's going to be some batch painting techniques but it's going to be I think you guys will really like it because you don't see a lot of people doing batch painting techniques online. Yeah, they, batch painting is pretty good. I did yeah. that when I painted my like 250 pox walkers. Well, and, and a lot of people do theory. They'll like they'll paint one model and be like, "Hey, this is how you batch paint," but they don't. You don't see it. Right. And I'm going to be showing you. And I, I, when I do it, it's in batches of three, five, and ten. And. Um, and I'm going to be applying some, I guess, some pretty advanced uh, painting techniques, but I'm going to be doing it in a batch painting way. So it'll, it's not going to be super efficient and like, I'm not going to win a golden demon with it, but um, I would dare to say I'm going to, I'll win a couple local painting contests at tournaments for oh. sure. Not if I have anything to say about it. Well, it'll be a 40 k and we you know, know I don't go I, I'll just, you get, if someone wants me to paint a 40k army, you give me the models, I'll paint it. <laughs> okay. hmm. Oh, really? But it, but I will charge you. I want to do a shout out though, real quick to uh, Ho is it Hotex 1973? Um, because I did a intro to Sigmar last Sunday at the Atomic Hobby for a bunch of people. And he came down and a couple other individuals came down. And so he's in chat. And so I want to say thank you for coming down, you know, doing just intro basics to the Sigmar and the rules and, uh, uh, you know, army composition, you know, the little stuff. So I appreciate that. Um, so I just wanted to do a shout out. That's cool, man. Yeah. Um, so apparently, um, People have heard that there's a donate button to see if I will uh, take my clothes off during the stream. Um, currently, no. Currently, no. Not until I finish the rest of the waxing. Um, once no. I finish. No. Why no? are you hairy glory? No, no, no. I want you guys to see my glistening Adonis body. Um, should I add skulls to this, by the way? <laughs> I'm sorry. No. Don't ask holes. No, it's too too clean. Okay. Yeah. 
And don't don't pull don't pull a games workshop where it's like, oh, this tree needs a skull coming out of it. Cool. Well, his walls are done. Hey, at the very least, I'd say real quick that at least Games Workshop has been pulling back on the amount of skulls that they've been putting on their terrain pieces. Mm. So, Did you see the Age of Sigmar corn piece of terrain? <laughs> Well, Did it's corn. It the spells that are coming out, the Forbidden Lore spells with all the skulls all over the place. Yeah, but it, it's it's corn. It has no, to but be. the other one's not even corn. They're just in the spells. Huh? <laughs> oh, man, the chat is really good. Uh, John take a, takes a handful of lotion, stares at the camera. Now I'll apply two thin coats. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you guys are horrible, but yes, I will do that. <laughs> And then I'll spray myself with purity seal. It's gonna be great. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're off the topic. Okay, back on topic. <laughs> okay, back on topic. Back on topic. Um, okay. Just to give you a review, Jonathan, I don't know if I told you this. I told John today is I took Masters brush cleaner and Gentastics brush cleaner over the weekend. I have. <coughs> you okay yep. there, guy? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And I took this big brush and I soaked it in um, the Vallejo uh, texture paint and I let it harden overnight. And so I took two brushes like this and I cleaned it with <coughs> each one of them. And it almost feels brand new using Gentastics, the Creature Caster soap. The Masters, it would only clean half of it. It wouldn't get through all through the bristles. It wouldn't release it or nothing. So that sounds like sorcery. It was amazing. Well, I've got my Gentastic uh, soap in today. I'm looking forward to using. I got some new brushes. Well, actually, not new brushes, but uh, I apparently I've been holding on to a bunch of Artificer brushes from like four or five years ago from GW. Oh. Yeah, like the thirty dollar, twenty five, thirty dollar brushes, still in the tube, still all ready to go. I know, right? Oh my gosh! <laughs> when I was cleaning out Narnia. Uh, which is for the unit where Narnia is my pantry full of bits and boxes and stuff instead of food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. That's a, true, that's a true gamer. Marvel I had, over food. I had uh, about, it's about almost $70 worth of brushes. Jeez. Just sitting there. <laughs> to use, so. so you got like three artificial brushes? Um, <laughs> Uh, two artificer brushes, and then this other Kalinsky super horsehair brush that was like thirty-two dollars. Just make sure you clean it before you use them. Mm -hmm. So okay, so we got some things to talk about. What? what, I, what, what like what? Mm -hmm. Well, so nobody's harassing me about rubbing weird lotions on me, so I think we're good for the moment. Um. Sounds like there's going to be a bidding war. Okay. You guys are getting crazy. Um, uh, I guess we could talk about Adepticon. I wish I went. Same mm. year. You know every what? Every year I say that, and it's always good every year. I'm about to probably say something really bad, but I think I might skip LBO next year. What? And, 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 and unless I'm going to be a judge at LBO. Um, which cross my fingers, Reese, if you're watching, remember yeah. me, set my application in. Um, if I'm not a judge at, uh, there, I probably won't go. Uh, and I'm going to go to Adepticon. I, that seems like more like my event than the championship there at, uh, LVO. And financially it's a slightly better option for me. So I think, don't quote me, because um, also at this time next year, Clint and I are going to be heading to Japan, hopefully. So I don't know what's going to happen. So you go to Tokyo. I, what's that? Tokyo. I think that's where we're going to go into, and then we're going to. I want to head to a place. Uh, I can't think of it outside of town. It's like an uh, hour trip on um what's it called uh bullet train the bullet train yeah 
Exactly. So um, it's where they show they they're uh, filming the same time that they're filming a, a show called uh, Terrace House um, on Netflix. Huh. Not. And I want, I want to head there not because that's where they're filming it. Obviously, filming is probably already done, even though they're in season six. Um, all the restaurants and the sites and everything. I want to go for there. Clint also wants us to go to the Evangelion land for those of you that like uh, Evangelion. Uh, so we're we're basically going to go for I think we're looking at like seven days, and of course we're going to visit the Games Workshop store there in Japan. I do. And, we'll, and we'll be like, "What is this? I've never seen this. Walk me through it, friendly Japanese Games Workshop employee." and learn how to build and paint and play in Japan. So there's actually um, on uh, FMP Abroad, I have a show where I went to Tokyo and I'm quietly saying I'm not supposed to be filming as oh. I'm filming. Because <laughs> I started filming, it was like, oh, no, you, you can't do that here. And I was like, oh. Well, I, I want to check out upstairs. So I walk upstairs where the game tables and all the models were. I was like, oh, check this out <laughs> quietly. Why can't – that's really weird that you couldn't film. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, well, you know, the Citadel is kind of like that. They don't want us to film, like, the events that are going on, but it's okay to film in the area, in the store. So I don't know. Weird. Hopefully it will be different when we go. I mean, yeah, I went. It was uh, it was about three years ago I went. So well, maybe I'll get some spy glasses. You know, the they've got like the eight gigabyte SD chip. You know, the big old. They look like the old people sunglasses. Have I? These are not fake glasses. So, um, yeah, Adepticon. Oh, Adepticon. <laughs> Man. Adepticon. Uh, so I, I'm, I'll just lead off real quick because so for AOS, Seraphim. Seraphim won uh, using uh, Sayish as its mortal realm. And this is where I'm going to tell you their leader, their, their list real quick. Um, uh, the Engine of Gods, 220 points, Artifact, Eternal, the Eternal Amulet. Then you had the Saras. Astrolith Bearer, 160 points, Artifact, Incandescent, uh, I can't even see its glory, the Incandescent Relic, um, and then the Slan Star Master, 260 points, he was the General with the Command Trait, Great Rememberer, he had his units, he had 10 Skinks, 60 points, Javelins and Bucklers, another 10 Skinks, same thing, <coughs> oh, no, sorry, not same thing, uh, he had uh, Bolt Splitters and Star Bucklers, another 10 Skinks with the same thing, Four razor, razor dons, uh, 160 points each. Or for the 160 points, three skink handlers, 40 points. Three ripper dactyl riders, 140 points. Five evocators with great staffs for 200 points, which was his allies. Um, and then he had the bastilodon battalion, uh, bastilodons at 280 points, and a stegodon at 220 points, and then the thunderquake star host at 120 points. Um, amazing, like it, that. It was it, amazing to, to read and hear about that list and how it did. Um, I mean, the second place. I'm not gonna go through the list on this one. Um, you had, I think it's Skaven. Uh, let me make sure here. Don't quote me yet. I want to make sure I get the right picture up here. Uh, yes, it was Skaven. Um, and then third, I don't know who. I, I, those are the top two armies, first and second. Um, best appearance was a Sylvanus player. Um, second was a Stormcast, and third was Deepkin. Player's choice, uh, Oscar Lars. Uh, but yeah, the model, I was seeing the armies. The display boards and oh my gosh was it blowing me away for age of sigmar like hands down i don't know then this is just my opinion and i've been to a devcon i have been there i have seen this stuff firsthand when it came back to chicago um and 
to this day, the Age of Sigmar feels more crisp, clean in aspects of dioramas and stuff. Um, because, you know, you have the grim dark, and I, I'm not kicking it. I did 40K forever, and I saw some amazing pieces for the 40K stuff. But these armies for the Age of Sigmar for Depcom were just mind-blowing, in my opinion, for, for the overall. You're so, a 40K hater. No, no, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Like this, the 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 Seraphin. I'm I'm looking at the picture of his army right now, and it's amazing. I mean, there's a lot of models to get on, you know, a certain board, but it it looks great. Um, and the paint job just unbelievable. So if you ever get a chance, guys, I'm telling you, if make it a goal to go to one of these conventions and just if you don't want to play just go to have fun walk around look at people meet people look at armies look at everything and you're just going to be inspired i promise look at, you. Look at people it's not creepy just go yeah <laughs> <laughs> i know right yeah, man. oh man but yeah it it was it looks great um the deep can looked amazing i, I mean again they're just all of them all of them are amazing armies so a completely unbiased opinion. Yes. Well, let me jump in here. So, <laughs> the 40K tournament um, was not won by Yanari or Imperial Soup. It was won by a Chaos Soup. And I'll get into the list in a minute, but uh, it was Jim Vessel um, won the 40K tournament. And if you get a chance, uh, his name is Jim Vessel, V E S A L. Google his army because he has some amazing conversions. Um, the great horned rat or whatever it's called from Age of Sigmar, he turned that into a greater demon. Um, he's got some amazing uh, uh, demon prince conversions. And the colors are just, it's an interesting palette that he went with his, his army. Um, and speaking of his army, I'll go over this real quick. So we got a lot to talk about for Adepticon. Um, it's Chaos Demon prim uh, Primary. Uh, it's the first battalion is All Nurgle. Uh, Pox Springer, Sloppity Bile Piper. I love that name. I believe Sloppity Bile Piper. Sloppity Bile Piper? Yeah. yeah. He's that <laughs> Nurgle guy with the pipe right, right? The, like that yeah. guy. Yeah. yeah, he's fun. Um, he had uh, his troops were like, uh, he has a group of three Nurglings, two squads of 30 Plague Bearers, and one battalion. He had another battalion. This was undivided, a change caster and a demon prince of chaos. Um, that was looks like corn with fifteen blood letters, twenty five pink whores, ten times uh, brimstone whores. And then he took a weird, uh, kind of weird supreme command attachment. I, I can kind of see why because of all the combinations of um, uh, psychic abilities. But he brought in Ariman, um, who is pretty much a. a a uh, insta give for uh, any chaos army. Uh, Demon Prince of Zinch, Demon Prince of Zinch, Sorcerer in Terminator armor, and then a Hellforge Contemptor Dreadnought with two times uh, conversion beams. And then he had uh, reinforcement points. Um, it just says five, but I'm, I'm guessing that's probably might have been, they might not have got the rest of the points on there, but maybe five or 500. Not sure, but it's pretty. It's pretty Two clear. Texts. What's that? Two texts come off. Oh, and uh, keep in mind that as I as I looked at uh, some of the things he went up against, he went up against a couple Imperial soup lists with Castellans. Went up against Gene Stealer cults, which have been on the rise, and no pun intended. Um, so you know, kudos to him for winning. There was a slight controversy in the 40k tournament. Oh, really? I didn't hear. I was actually wondering if there's any drama. Let's go. I would say, yeah. Magic. Um, drama 40K, the, really? <laughs> yes. The uh, the drama was um, a player. I don't have all the details, and there's lots of things going back and forth. Um, but uh, Josh Death, um, who's been kind of a controversial figure in uh, the big tournament scene uh, last year at LVO, uh, 2018, he had to bow out because he, or he, he dropped himself because he, in the finals, because he um, had something wrong with his list. 
or something like that. And then there's been a couple of GTs or majors that he's had to disqualify himself because he was, you, I don't want to say cheating. So, but he was wrong in his list or wrong in how he was doing his tactics. And that's what happened again here. Um, so I don't have all the details of what, it, what happened. I think it, if I read correctly, it was something about strat. He was using some stratagems incorrectly. Um, there was actually a petition started for him to be banned and lose all of his ITC points for the year, just for the year, based on uh, the repeated behavior of, oh, I've been playing this wrong, or oh, I built my list wrong. Now, keep in mind, this is a top competitor that's had to disqualify himself several times. And a lot of people are just saying that he's only disqualifying himself and he's because he get, got caught cheating or whatnot. But I don't know. I don't think the petition was necessary, but you know, for anybody that knows Josh Death, um, pass, <laughs> pass the word. Maybe you need to like step back, not play in one of these big tournaments and get your head on straight. If um, if you're making these kind of big mistakes with your name out there, like it is, you know, if you're one of the pro guys out there. You need to maybe take a step back and re reassess what you're doing because you're kind of getting uh, developing a very bad name for yourself. Well, it, it goes both ways, though. It, it does. It, it, it's. I mean, I'm. I'll, I'll throw myself out there. You know, I suffered a brain injury and I have memory issues. No matter if I play the game five thousand times, I always forget things. It's the nature of my brain right now, right? Mm -hmm. So if I forget a rule, or if I do a technique wrong, or I, I misplay something, the oppo your opponent should be a gentleman and catch you, and you should be a gentleman like, oh, I am so sorry, or whatever, and, and redo it or whatnot. But if no one catches it, if it was done maliciously, I am 100% behind, hey, you need, to, you need to stop. Yeah. But if it's out of a common... There's so many people at these big conventions. It's so loud. There's so much yeah, going yeah. on. There's so many factors. And I'm not saying I'm not backing up either side. It's just I think social media and people nowadays with this ITC are taking things to a level where it doesn't need to be. Well, and that's why I'm not using him. You know, that's what I'm saying. Maybe um, if you are repeating the same mistakes, yeah. Maybe maybe take a step back. Yep. And maybe sit out a get, sit out a, a big term like that, and reassess what you're doing. See what you're doing wrong, and come up with a plan uh, to basically prevent that from happening again. Yeah. You know, it's not like I, I don't think he, like I said, I don't think he needs to be banned unless he was deliberately cheating. Then hey, ban the guy. But um, no, you know, I mean, yeah. if you're malicious, oh, I'm hands down. Put drop the gavel. You know, well, and, and that's why, you know, we, we talked about um, before about prepping for tournaments and having basically flashcards so yep. you don't forget things. Yep. Um, have your FAQs on hand. We, we don't say these things just because well, it's not like we're getting paid to say it. You know, have your FAQs on hand. You know, the, the, the data cards that you have inside your codex are ideal for you to make a photocopy of and have that card basically with your rules for that unit available. So you don't have to flip through your book. You can have that card and just look at the rules right there. And I mean, that's why they still have the data cards or, uh, so you can have all your strategies and psychic powers available. You know, they're, they're, these tools are there for a reason because there's a lot going on in a game. If you don't have a tool, find a way to make a tool to help you personally. So you are not just helping yourself. You have to think of everybody else. So well, flashcards are cheap. You know what I mean? You can buy some mm -hmm. flashcards and put some flashcards out. Write your stuff on them, and yeah, you know. So I, I hope test. everything. I hope everything works out with them. Yeah. Um, and because I, if I remember correctly, he's a vet. He's been to a lot of. Um, he's, he has a or had a. Uh, not a seeing eye dog. Um, uh, yeah. Not an animal companion. What do they call it? <laughs> God, I just had it too. Uh, Therapy. Service dog. What? Service dog. Service animal, yeah. Wait. Is he the Texas guy? I think it, if it's the one I'm thinking of, I think that's him. That That's the one where the dog bit Viet. Because that dog wasn't a service dog. He always said it was a service dog. 
But a chest dog doesn't bite. True. It, it bit the it. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. That's why the dog hasn't been at the events. Oh, okay. Well, um, to answer Tyler's question, yeah, they do have a, a, a card system for ITC, but I don't know if um, how Adepticon, just because you're having an ITC event right now, you don't have to use that code of conduct. So if uh, Adepticon did not set up that uh, code of conduct as, hey, these are the rules that we're following, then the card system wouldn't, wouldn't have mattered. Um, and he had, you know, the good thing on him is that he did disqualify himself. He didn't sit there and argue and fight and, and treat people badly. He said, you know what? I really messed up. I have to disqualify myself. It's, it's and, right there, man, right there. No matter if he's messed up and people are bagging him, he took it upon himself. Right. That, and, that's and called, that's, oh, yeah, sorry. That, oh, no, it's all right. That, that's integrity right there. I mean, you know, so I, I can't bag on him. And that's no. why I'm, you know, trying to be, make a logical assessment of this. And I wasn't there. I yeah. didn't watch any of the games. So I have no proof. All, you know, all I have is secondhand, thirdhand knowledge. So, um, but other than that, the event was, 40K event was really good. I don't remember how many players there were, um, but it was a very odd field. Um, lot, there, I think in the top 10, there was five Orc players. Nice. Yeah, it was it was a real mix at the top tables. Well, for, for Age of Sigma, there was 187 participants. Uh, the top 10, um, and they only did it by Allegiance. So it's one... Two, three, four, five order armies. Uh, one, two, looks like three chaos and two death. No destruction whatsoever. And the first destruction army to show on the charts was 18th. Um, and then did I got a shout out. Piece? What's that? I don't mean to interrupt. Did you guys see this piece I made? Um, yeah, I see it right now. Right. <laughs> Yeah, right there. <laughs> Thanks, man. You're welcome. Um, that looks good, man. I like that. Um, nice. and James West, the guy from LVO for AOS, he actually played in the championship and then played East. Uh, I think 39th, and I think he did the Ever Chosen again. Oh. And so he got 39th out of 187 people. So shout out to James West again. I know we're we still have those interviews that I, you know we're working on to get out there and so people can see those that we did at LVO. Um, as well as the doubles, Age of Sigmar doubles, there were because uh, a total of, oh my gosh, there's a lot of teams, 148 teams. Jesus, what are you doing? I know, right? Sorry. Was that loud? Get that in there. <laughs> oh, no. I so I'm doing this this Vallejo pigment. Yeah. It's all dust. And so I have a big dust bin. I've been dusting everything. And the stuff I'm not breathing in and killing myself, yeah. um, I just push it out of the bottom so I could reuse it. So Why don't you get a big plastic tote with a lid and you stick it in there, close the lid and grab it and go, <laughs> done. <laughs> okay. Back there. Uh, so 148 teams for the team tournament which you know double that that's how many players which was more players in the team tournament than there was in championship which is a freaking amazing um and the first the top team uh nicholas walters and scooter walters and they played chaos and they won so yeah amazing three rounds just Seen, seen the over the years the expanding of people playing Age of Sigmar. Mm -hmm. It's just mind-boggling. It's just more and more and more and more. Awesome. Well, they keep coming out with cool models. So I mean, like they when really they came out with the Spooky Ghosts, I was like, man, I'll play Spooky Ghosts. Yeah. Spooky Ghosts. They they hurt. Um, yeah, why aren't they well, winning tournaments? Everyone's like, oh, they're so good, but they are. Everyone's winning tournaments. But the issue is, I think, is just like where I'm sitting with my, my orcs, my iron jaws. 
there's other armies or other builds that do what I usually should be able to do. do they do it better because they got updated or there's different combos. But I think the reason that personally, I, why you don't see like the team tournament or was it uh, the championships? Death came in second. Or no, wait, is that the uh, Death Con? No, that's not the right one. Sorry, wrong thing. Um, make sure I get the right one up here. Oh, I can't find it. Well, it, I think it's just finding that that combo and playing the objective a lot and playing the the matchups. There's a lot of things that have to go in, you know, to work out, in my opinion. Like seeing Seraphin win. That's that's amazing. So it's hard, you know, it's usually usually what see chaos or order, you know. Those are usually the top two. Yeah. Um, so uh, before we get into it, we've got a couple leaks or something. You guys might have even seen some of the leaks. Um, if you guys are have been living under a rock, uh, I'm going to recommend that you go to the Warhammer community page and read in detail of what was uh, revealed last week. Um, Last week, we all sat around right before the show ended and pretty much said, hey, what do you think is coming um, the day uh, the day after the show when they were going to announce all the stuff from Adepticon? Mm -hmm. and I think unanimously, we pretty much said, Slamash. Was I right about that? Yep. Yep. That's what I said. I was like, I called it. Yep. And sure enough, now, they a, a lot was revealed. I mean, a I mean, there's so much stuff. I was so giddy. I, 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 my, I, my head. I got a headache actually, looking at everything that next day. I was so excited, um, and and anticipating the wait at nine till like nine o'clock or seven o'clock whenever it showed. But um, yeah, the the big reveal I would say. I, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but it is Slanesh uh, coming out for Age of Sigmar. Yep. Amazing. Yes. I mean. You do know that it probably right behind him was 40k. Do you think? Yeah, I don't think so. No. <laughs> nah. They might do a cult. No, it's it's going to be Emperor's Children, not Slanesh. That well, same. same oh same. no! Oh no! No no! It's not. Look, same same same. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, here's an here's an interesting thing for the 40k side, is um, will. The chaos. Um, are they going to put out another chaos book? For because there's no specific chaos um, demon book. Just the, it's just the generic uh, chaos or demons of chaos book. So how are they going to update the current book with these new Slanesh models? That's that's my question. That's even if you get to use them. I think you will because they. If we look at all the other demon models. There's cross yeah, um, I know. platforming. I know. Could cross this could be the first. This could be the break of the cycle. They could be like, you know what? Don't so you say just an age of Sigmar thing now? Because yeah. because you know the lore right now. So Nash is trapped, getting tortured by uh, Tyrion and uh, Teclas. I think it's mm -hmm. so yeah. Nash is trapped and getting tortured. So having a good time. Well, he ate all those elves, so they're trying to regurgitate all those elves. So he, they're Sinesh is looking, you know, trying to find, or the the armies of Sinesh are trying to find Sinesh. So, what, how are they make? How are they torture him? Give him like what epicat or whatever to, to vomit that stuff up? I mean, well, it's like being bulimic, right? If you have to make it castor throw oil, you know? <laughs> now there's castor oil. <sighs> yeah, and it's dual with uh, softener. <laughs> Uh, hey, you know, laxative, whatever. Magnesium hmm? citrate. Again, all you're doing is threatening Slanesh with a good time. Yeah. I think yeah. I think they're trying to change his perspective. Be like, look, you think this is all good time? By the time we get done with you, you're going to reverse those thoughts. <laughs> but really? <laughs> you know, it, it, you know but it's supposed to be PG. <laughs> yeah, well, there's nothing PG about that. I, no, I know. We just so it's um, so much better. You know, and I have to say, the reason why I like Slanesh so much, besides, you know, the possible perverted side of me, um, is that the I really like 
models that have a nice fluid motion to them yep. that look like they get they're very um, athletic very um, agile they can they have a nice um, elegant way that they move not the eldar way because i don't i can't stand the eldar or the elves but the way the sonesh models look i really like the great almost a weird gracefulness that oh. they have yep you know not not their boobies well the boobies are covered up so you know if I, if I, oh i didn't even i don't like those models but um i mean if i wanted models with boobies i would get such of the battles or um witch elves from the uh, daughters of cain you know but there's i don't know there's this, uh, this oh, beautiful aspect to these models and i like the way that they move they have a nice flow to them um and except for the demonette models i'm not 100 percent sold on about half of them um, you know, if i like the boobies that's what i tell people to to make me seem sophisticated so <laughs> <laughs> i'm like no damn it they're great they're elegant and beautiful nudity That's art. art they they can you know he can people can say what they want i really love the models there's there's something awesome about it and uh, i'm looking forward to you i don't even care how bad they are you know in a, in a um, competitive setting i just want to paint those models i'm already trying to come up with a good color scheme and how i'm going to pull off am i going to do glazing am i going to do wet blending I don't know yet. I'm just coming up with all sorts of color palettes. You know, do I want to go with normal purple, that palette, that um, gray purplish flesh that they got going on? I don't know. Lots of possibilities there. And then they have, there's some other Age of Sigmar news that I will let Ski talk about. There's other news? Like what? Well, the, there's the Loon Curse that's coming up. I don't know if you read about that. Uh, a little bit, not a total. I've been kind uh, of more drooling uh, over Warcry. Yeah, yeah. Well, go ahead and about Warcry. Oh my god! I can, I can talk about the Loon Curse. Yeah, um, yeah, Warcry, man. I mean, I think it's going to be. How do I explain this? Because I remember back, okay, remember we did a video back in the day where I had the release of the armies that everybody's going to be using and everything that's going to be able to be used and magic's not going to be a thing and, um, you know, no new care, no name characters, I think it was. But, man, this, these models, this whole box set, whatever it is, whatever this is going to be is just mind-blowing. Because, for one, oh, there's, here we go, there's new terrain. So, in the box set, it's going to be modular terrain in the box set. It looks like um, the, uh, the guys in red. I forget what they called them. Um, they look amazing because you have like this iron golem, and then you got a, a, a dwarf in there as well. Um, the new furies look amazing. Like the whole thing. That ah, it's just beautiful. I, I I just can't can't even. What's that? You can't even. I can't even. I can't even fathom. I can't even think of the words. I think it's gonna be a great game. I really. How do, do you feel about that that turkey thing? <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know. The uh, let's see how do you raptor x? Is it the raptor, raptor x or something? Yeah, I mean it looks like a big muscular turkey <laughs> <laughs> with a with like a mane of hair and spikes uh, and a and I don't know what's going on with that thing. I don't I, know. I don't know. Um, and they actually have a website up, Age of Sigmar, you know, Warcry. Uh, for, I think it's Games Workshop did this, of course. Um, and it has the factions. It has the realms. Uh, you know, it, it, it's... It's... Uh, I think... It's going to be like the version of Kill Team? It's, it's the creators of Kill Team and Underworlds. They designed this. So I have a feeling this will be our kill team, ver you know, our version of kill team. Okay. Um, because Shadespire is a game in itself. Yes. You know. 
Yeah. Uh, but I just think it's going to, uh, if you look at the, the uh, app or what, the picture they did with all the different factions in the circle and all that stuff, um, you know, that's just the beginning. Of course. Uh, if you're, if you're not into big, the big 40 K or the HSA bar games, then this would be the, the, the avenue to go. Um, I know I'm probably gonna get a box just because of the terrain. I hate I, 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 the modular terrain um, and a couple models. Like I want the dwarf. I want to paint him up. <laughs> um, and and the golem, the iron golem. I think it is. Uh, amazing models. I I don't know. I think I, I if I remember, there's no magic. I don't think there's gonna be any magic in this game. So there won't be any casters. There won't be any, any spells. Any of that stuff. I think it's straight up uh, regular dudes. And I, I don't think there's any name characters either. But I have a sneaky feeling, though, they'll do what they do with Kill Team, or I don't know how it's going to work with Kill Team where they're doing the whole, okay, here's your commanders, now here's the elites, and they keep progressing it. Yeah. I don't know if they're going to do that for Age of Sigmar because we don't really have – we have our heroes, we have our battle line, and then we have others, and then we have behemoths, artillery. So – it's not like you know 40k where you have oh fast attack elites all that stuff. So such a hater. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. Your, your condescending voice. No, 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 no. It's all about terminators. If you're gonna play 40k, it's all about taking terminators and representing the way they're supposed to be. Right. Like dying to attrition. Did you not read the article about terminators? Dying to attrition. No, actually, I didn't. I put that article up for somebody else to read because they were going <laughs> on about uh, uh, Terminator. So I want, it felt like it was, since it was a Games Workshop article, it had to be good. <laughs> uh, fluffing up the Terminators in anticipation of the Chaos, the new Chaos Space Marine Terminators coming out this weekend. Um, yeah, I, I'm a fan of Terminators, but um right now there's so many other good looking models right now i don't want to i don't want to paint i've paint, painted enough terminators over my lifetime i can take a break just like me i've painted enough space marines in my lifetime no. that's why yeah. i'm playing stormcast and i'm not in the 40k that's why i'm looking forward to um eight age of sigmar models is that i'll be painting up um a completely different model type yeah. and i'm gonna go from the bulky power armor to these very lith, light, lith, very skinny athletic models with one boob and weird wacky hair. So it's going to be interesting. Change not only changing the color palette, but um, body type. Because I'm probably going to buy one of them just to paint too. Like I, like I, I, I tell people like, oh, I want this. Oh, I want that. I want to paint this. I was like, don't start the army if you just want to paint. Just buy a model and paint it. Get your kicks out of it because you might even, and then you can tell if you enjoy it. Yeah. So and I, I've already started. I, we I talked to you before about it. I've already started working on conversions a while ago, and now it's you know now it's going to pay off those Slanesh models. Now I won't be showing those until probably sometime in May, because um, I got to get that the Vanguard Primaris Marines done in thirty days. Um. So what about the new? Uh... Well, before you hit that, uh, they did show you the Forbidden Lore spells and the spells, mm -hmm. which is another. If I'm if I'm right, I'm, I think they're they're going to be universal. I think it's another set of universal spells. That's what I was reading. Yeah, um, amazing looking. The boatman, the the freaking ferryman, is amazing. That's what I call him. But again, he's all skulls. The boat is skulls. The skeleton is, has a skull. The, like everything, the, the smoke underneath the boat, there's skulls in it. I mean, amazing model. <laughs> so, those will be coming out. I can't wait to see what they do with those. Skull are edgy. Okay. What? Ooh. Skulls are edgy. They're edgy. They're really like circumference. You know, they have that edgy. There's no edges to them. Like an edge lord. Oh, oh my bad, my bad. <laughs> what else? What have you read? Uh, about those endless spells? No, no, of the other uh, other stuff. Oh uh, well, I mean, I didn't know too much about the fire slayers. I was hoping you could talk about that. Oh, I was gonna. Okay, well, I was gonna give you a chance to talk about the yeah. other part. Okay, well, uh, just two pieces of information then. 
Um, we don't have all details yet, but there is the Loon Curse that's coming up. Um, it's going to be an, I don't know if it's an Age of Sigmar event. Is it a box set? I, I feel like it's a box set and it'll be probably a launching point for um, more or new uh, Sylvaneth models and endless spells. Um, but it'll probably be a box set, kind of like the Carrying Empire that came out with uh, Flesh Eater Quartz and Skaven. Skaven. Uh, but this is the Sylvaneth with um, uh, the Gloom Spite. Is that right? Gloom Spite Ken? Gets. Gets. Um, and it'll probably be a whole bunch of new models or just repackaged models like some Wood Elf stuff will be tossed in there, maybe. And then, of course, Endless Spells. Yeah, because because Sylvaneth, because um, the trend right now is every army is getting endless spells. Yeah, every army is getting a piece of terrain, mm -hmm. which is great. But again, it's lacking modular terrain for Age of Sigmar in itself. Yeah, yeah. It's, so there's no universal terrain. Um, now that doesn't mean you can't use faction army terrain to just use as terrain, mind right. you. Right? Um, just to let some people out there know, it's it's still usable just as what it is. Um, and, but the crazy thing is when this all started, it started with Deepkin and Magikin. They're the first two armies to get terrain pieces mm -hmm. and not get any in the spells. So they're going to be probably the last in the shoot, if anything, for at least in the spells. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's I'm only, um, theorizing that that's what's going to happen, you know, that it's going to be i mean just to look at the graphic that they showed a little tiny video it looked like um well it was squid hoppers or something eating looks like sprites yep forest so i'm assuming it's going to be sylvaneth versus them or who knows maybe they go hey here's a whole wooden army well the fluff though too is the sylvaneth the realm of life it's been decimated a lot by nurgle yeah so and yeah. What's that? Yay. Yay. Um, and then what's even crazier in that Gortex Gore audio novel, there's a part where they're fighting Sylvaneth. Oh, wow. And it was great. Uh, really cool. And it was Fire Slayers, which brings to a, a new Fire Slayer release, which is amazing. They got their endless spells. They've got their piece of terrain, which looks really cool. Yeah. Um, I, I, I just, this will be an answer. Piece of terrain they get, I forgot. It was oh the the forge. Yeah, the forge, the dwarven forge. Yeah. Um, but this book should show us what they do to old armies. And I, I mean, Skaven and and Fleshier Court was already a, a good example, but they didn't really need they, they needed some tweaking and some improvements, but they didn't need a much as much love as the dwarf faction as a whole needs. Like the whole dwarven line needs a redo and needs help because of just the way it is. And so this will show us what they're looking at for some of these armies, like greenskins. Greenskins are no longer on the market in GW. You, they're still playable, but you can't buy them, which is hmm. crazy. Yeah, that's good. Uh, uh, Iron Jaws are all these new books, and being Iron Jaws players and talking with people is. We had all the speed and resilience and you know and we've been FAQ'd and handicapped with a you know walker and all these other armies are doing things better than we can. Unbiased opinion. No, 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 no. Um and then bone splitters too. You don't see many bone splitters right now because again, there's other armies out there that do everything better. And so uh fire slayers are kind of in the same boat. So we'll see. And this new book, I can't wait. I'm actually really excited because, again, I have, you know, a dispossessed army. I've got, yeah, I wanted to do some other armies, but I haven't because of the fact that they really need some love. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think it'll be almost another, almost another summer of, uh, of, of Sigmar, uh, like last year. I was going to uh, say, do you think we're doing a summer of Sigmar this year, or do you think it's going to be 40K love? No, I think we're going to. It's going to be more concentrated on Age of Sigmar, I think, at least the first half of the summer. Because we have General's uh, Handbook coming soon. Yeah, so I think by July, around July time, it'll either be ending or beginning 
and the other half will be 40k i think with 40k um the apocalypse set is coming out that'll be a big release this year did you see the dice did yes you see the dice it, there was a d12s in there yeah um and then movement trays uh clear plastic movement trays i was wondering actually i think a lot of people were wondering when games workshop was going to jump on that because there's a lot of uh, third-party companies out there that are using those trays they're amazing yeah. and let me go ahead and say um games workshop stores about those bases about people having um, different companies bases on it um i've been at a games workshop store with my models and somebody else was there with their models as well that had non-games workshop bases on it and they did not do anything so um i don't know if all that stuff was just blown out of proportion or what but the reason why i bring that up is because the movement trays somebody had a lot of movement trays that were not games workshop um so yeah, but, but movement trays are just movement trays i mean yeah you know, you know i have movement trays from hammerhead games i've got movement trays from battle rec uh, yeah i'm going to actually order some more from battle rec because i like their designs of the different way they have the formations mm -hmm. uh, but it's just to help speed up the game and yeah. for those people that play horde armies if you're having problems finding movement trays or you're trying on the fence about getting movement trays or oh it's not my style or whatever your reasons are i highly suggest breaking that norm and getting them if it's going to help your gameplay or yeah. you just get good scrub and move your army well, get them from uh, Battle Wreck. Uh, I was look. Ski had told me you had told me about it. you're in contact with them. I think. Yep. And well, you can probably go into more detail, but they've got some amazing looking trays. And well, I'll let you run with that. Uh, I can find some real quick. Hold on. Well, while you're looking at that, anyway, I was up at that Games Workshop store with. Um, I would probably pronounce it wrong, but Scribe War Monsters Miniature uh, basing material, and um even a couple of the models that i had that was up for the painting contest were where they were being judged by the you know, games workshop employees one of them was straight from the home office nobody said anything i didn't get disqualified or asked to remove the models so um now i did not go up there with third party parts or anything i went up there with full games workshop um, models but not the basing material so i wouldn't i wouldn't uh, stress about it. I don't know if okay. for sticklers are they on the basic material? I, well, I there was, hear that. There was something that came out a while ago, um, late late uh, late last year, I think it was, and uh, somebody said that they weren't allowed to have them. And Games Workshop employee, I think, it backed it up on Facebook or something. And the whole thing kind of got blown out of proportion. Um, yeah, but their events, their tables, they always say they just want. The models have to be Games Workshop or Forge World. The models didn't say anything about bases. And even going over their um, little event plan thing that I did for the first heat, nothing in there about bases, except that it needs to be based. So, well, <laughs> I'm going to dust bunny over there. Um. <laughs> right, right on my nose, it's going to be orange. But uh, that. Uh, I'll tell you that apocalypse box that's coming out. If, if it's anything like last time, that was the first time apocalypse came out. Um, there'll be a if there's a limited edition box for apocalypse, um, and they're calling it the apocalypse the mass battle system. If there's a limited edition box, it's gonna have if it's like last time. It's gonna have a lot of cool swag in it. Mm -hmm. So don't hesitate on getting that that special edition. Even I would start saving up. A little bit of money out of your paycheck each month right now or each week don't you know stop going to mcdonald's like two or three times during the week and just like get make some sandwiches or something save some money up because this is going to be this is probably going to be the box to get this yep. year i agree um movement trays so i'm gonna hold up two different movement trays so the left my left your guys is yeah my left this is thicker than battle wreck but this is hammerheads and it's, these are 32 millimeter sized uh circles and this is a five man tray now the reason i, I like these ones too because they're a little thicker on the the 
the top. So they sit in there a little bit sturdier, but sometimes you'll get them stuck in here. But they're, these are good movement trays. Then you have Battle Wreck uh, with Mr. Um, hey, Jonathan, who's who's um, Hammerhead? Who's the uh, main guy? Tony. 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 Okay, so Tony from Hammerhead, thank you so much again. I want to just shout out, you know, for. Uh, He's a great guy. Super chill. chill. What's that? I didn't know that they great guy. He's super chill. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. He's amazing. I want to. I'm still going to do an interview with him. Um, and then Mr. Mike and Mr. Uh, Jeff here in Texas, Battle Wreck, um, do movement trace too, and these are 32s uh, size, and it's five of them. I know it's hard to see because they're clear, but uh, right there. There we go. Don't. Now you're moving. Stop. There we go. Right there. <laughs> um, this is just not just one. The, there's many different styles, and they working on their catalog. Um, easy put together, and they're amazing. These are just thinner, so they don't take away from the aesthetics of your display board. So you can put these on your display board with your models in here and base, and it's very hard to see. It doesn't take away. Can I see the uh, Hammerhead Games one? Let's see here. Let me get a better view here. Okay. Let me just click on your picture because yep. somebody's making noise that's making me uh, jump over there. Oh, oh, really hard to see. See. Everybody can see you. I, I like the uh, I like those deeper. I like I like the little deeper recess, so I don't have to worry about my model popping out, but. Um, that would be really good for when I want to like have a nice lineup. I, I haven't seen all of uh, Hammerhead's um, versions. Do they have similar where they have different shapes and such? I, I don't know myself either. Okay, I just you know what? While we're chatting, um, I, I remember all of, um, all their awesome little widgets and stuff that to be used for the game. Amazing, but I, I did not see about the bases and. Since I'm going to be going in the age of Sigmar, I need to be able to, I guess, start taking that into consideration. Yep. Um, I'm liking the thin ones because for age of Sigmar, these work great because it's you don't want to get them stuck in the thick ones because once you're your movement and you're getting to combat, you're going to be pulling them out a lot okay, quicker okay. than you will with 40k. So I would Got say it. the thicker ones are great for 40k just my personal opinion, thinking about strategy and how things are, the game's played. And I think the thinner ones are so much better for, for Age of Sigmar. Okay, well, I, I can certainly split between the two because I'm also looking at um, Hammerhead game stuff, you know, their wound dials and their uh, tokens and such. They got some amazing gear, so I can split between the two. And they do customization. Like I need to get with you or Jonathan one of these days and go over our designs, so I can you know get my own set of uh, stuff with my name on it. You know, so what? You, if you want to design something for you? Not design it for me. Just go over it. Like because I've not I haven't dealt with the company, so I know Jonathan has or so he he understands it. I know so, what you need to see. He's got me, boo. Got you, boo. <laughs> Wait a second. Okay, so I'm reading, getting caught up in the chat. Oh. Uh, I see somebody on there that I think you might have been on before a couple of times, but Matt Sullivan. Matt, are you the same Infinity guy that I know? Uh, I like how you're waiting because it's going to be like 15 second delay. Oh, that's right. I forgot about the delay. So, if so, awesome. I'm glad that you're over at Age of Sigmar or 40K, whichever one you're doing. Yes, he is the Infinity guy. Awesome. Um, glad that you're back over at the Games Workshop side. Not that Infinity is a bad game, um, it, especially if you like to you know, calculate the curvature of the earth and wind speed to try to figure out if you can shoot somebody. Hey, or, I think it was fun. I played a demo. It is fun, actually. I mean, I've got um, uh, I'm, I'm going to pronounce it wrong. Eugene um, team, and um, and I've started working on a secretarial army, a Japanese secretarial army. I, I and I love the models, but um, yeah. Well, it's good to see Sullivan. Oh, I got you. Mm, nice. Yeah, I think the models are cool. In fact, that's what I am going to be ordering for uh, 
um, and going to get a PhD this weekend. So, so while we're talking about awesome looking models, did anybody see the crystal brush, uh, top three models? No. Oh my gosh. You want to be blown away. And I'm not talking about your video that you sent me earlier, Mr. John, that was, oh. that blew me away. Um, oh, okay. I'm right. Uh, but the the crystal brush entries were so amazing. I saw a lot of them. Um, at Kumanis or not, they throw them up in there so you can vote. They're the second place model. I mean, the first place model was gorgeous, and it, I'm not going to take away from that. But what got me the most, and I don't understand how you didn't win, is a guy did Ulrich the Slayer from Space Wolves. When oh. you look at it from the front side, it looks like an art painting. Like it doesn't even look like a model until you see it turned and you're like, oh my God, that's actually a model. And it blew my mind. It, amazing. Like just the, the way people can do art in so many different ways. It was just crazy. I mean, is this crystal brush at um, Adepticon? Yes, sir. Every year. Oh, okay. So the only one I'm seeing is at Salute, which I think is going on this weekend. Yeah, it, it, that Ulrich the Slayer blew my mind. Like I, the first time I saw it, I was like, "Oh wait, look at that!" It, like they did posters or paintings, and then I'm like, "And when he turned it, it was just amazing." But um, you had that, and then you had Creature Caster doing the uh, the Resin Beast. I think it was. Yes. Oh, another blow! They did. But they gave away about six thousand dollars worth of prizes. Did you, are you seeing the model now? That's a miniature. That's a miniature. Or it might be, it might, it might not be a small one. I don't know the size comparison, but it's, but Holy doesn't look like, God. <laughs> doesn't even look like a painting. I mean, it doesn't look like a. I thought it was a painting. See, thank you. Share your thank screen, you. John. I want to see. No, I don't know how to do that. I, I'll up? send you, I'm, I'm just going to send you the link. No, no, no. Okay. What do I do? No. All right. On the left side. Right, there's a little menu. Right. The second one that says screen share. It's a little green screen with an arrow. All right. Click it. I clicked it. And then click it again when it says which screen or whatever. Um, entire screen? Yeah. All right. Is it working? No. <laughs> now it's now? Oh, oh. All right. Check this model okay. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. That's uh that is I, I, I quit. <laughs> I'm I, I don't even want to paint anymore. Do, okay, that's do you see the back side? Is there a picture of the back side? Not yet. Okay. I, I've seen both sides, so holy god. Dang. Yes. So you could tell it's a model from this side. Yeah. Oh, that was it for the back side. But, yeah, no, but no. So you see it, and you're like, yeah. cool. it's a model, great job. But then when you see the front the first time, you're just like. I thought that was a painting, I yep. swear. That's amazing. You got second place. Oh, that's well, second. Here's first place. Yes, which is amazing model. Like, I, I think it's a beautiful job, but. Yeah, but come on. There's like a handful of colors there. In comparison. Look at the light source yeah. now under the belly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yes, the model is gorgeous, but. And it could be just because I'm 40K guy, but comparing the two. I mean, that right there. This, I can tell that's a that's a miniature. Yep. Yeah. This, I swear to God, was a painting. <laughs> <laughs> and he's one of my favorite characters for Space Wolf anyway. So I'm yeah. so glad to see him again. This is not the first time I've seen Ulrich the Slayer in the Crystal Brush in the top five spots. Sorry, guys. Dude, your, uh, your computer's slow. I know. How do I, how do I turn off screen share? You click the screen share again and you turn it off. Is it off? No, not yet. Now it's off. Okay. Yeah, I know. I got a bad computer. Waiting for a certain somebody who's probably not watching the show to uh, maybe help me out. 
I mean, good God, that was. I got. I got to tell my friend um, uh, Jimmy Johnson about that. He is a huge Space Wolf guy. Yep. Well, now I got to make a new tier. That, <laughs> that's tier six. That's like tier ten. Like. No, no, no. Let, let, we, let's not go that high. Okay. <laughs> really? If you can make a miniature look like a painting, there's there's got to be like legendary tier, you know? It's super yeah. thank God. Okay. So I'll give it a seven. That, that was amazing. I mean, look, I'm already making a new tier altogether. So let, <laughs> six or seven. I just, God. I wonder if that person will have my baby. <clears throat> <laughs> That's well, a painting. Well, yeah. it takes is a good, uh, good painting model. Wow. That's gorgeous. Okay. So, oof. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Is that hot? Clean yourself. Here? Clean yourself. There you go. Drink some water. <laughs> um, I'm going to throw, I'm going to share a picture here if I can do it. Ooh. Let's see here. Oh, it's got to be on the same. There. I can't. Never mind. Never mind. I can't do that right now. You can share. Not on a different, different screen. Yeah, you don't want to share what's on your main screen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why I closed all those windows before I. Uh... Yeah, I, I did think one of your, one of your quick tabs though was how to sing better was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Anime music MP3 download. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> Oh, look. Man. What's this Mary Sue? I'm going to show your link, Con Man Chronicles. Let's hope it's not something Con Man y. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. wow. Look at that thing. I didn't even get to see the base. That is a beautiful. Yeah. Whoops. Jeez. <laughs> Amazing, man. Yeah, you guys. You guys make Shout out to, to Mark T. 1297 from his Instagram. Thank you for sharing that. I, I want to shout out that it is an amazing paint job. I, I'm a Space Wolf fan since second edition, and that is yeah, takes your breath away. Yeah, Space Wolf tattoo. I would say. Yes, I do. Ragnar Blackmane's company. And yet you've forsaken 40K. It's sad. No, I'm not forsaken it. I'm waiting them to, to fix it. I still love my lore. I still love my books. Fix what? It's, Eighth it's, edition is the best edition that's come out ever. Ugh. No. Oh, please. No. When when I see people playing Horus Heresy and they're pulling out the templates again, I go, <laughs> 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 Yeah, but when I have to carry around a, a Rolodex, eight books, a white dwarf, and be good at remembering command points and math i i'd rather not have to do you don't have that. to do that i'm gonna what do you mean? dude seventh edition you want to go over the oh, special rules i didn't say All seventh was good pages of special rules my favorite edition was third edition ah you're one of those yeah. Bring yeah, one of those back in my day back when the codexes were like this big the the rules were simple yeah, I mean, back in my day, we had shuffleboard. Yeah, I mean, second was cool. I, I, I got in right at the end of second, but third was I, I like third, man. Well, because it because the game could either last two turns or it lasted the full terms. Maybe three, three, three on average is where the games lasted. Well, you don't the have games. to worry about multiple books and white dwarfs so, and stuff if nice. you would play a single. Yeah, I, I love third edition. Especially when you have like you know blood claws and you're like oh I got 15 man blood claws and I'm gonna assault you, and it's Necron player and like oh I just killed everything oh I'm within I'm gonna roll my consolidation oh I can catch that other squad oh I'm gonna jump into that squad oh I'm gonna start combat again and kill that squad and I you know take out three or four squads in one turn with one unit. Uh, it's great. I'm back to ski not hearing me. I don't. I think you were cut out because I didn't hear you till just now. Oh really? Really? No, not you, Ski. Ski, can you hear John? <laughs> nope. Uh, it's okay because oh, no. I, I actually, I it's all right. It, I mean, no, it's I, getting, I can't hear him. It's 
It's uh, he's my cutting you off. <laughs> Uh, I, I actually, my, uh, I'm going to, I need to get off a little early, so it'll, it'll, it'll work out. No, it's all right. We can, we can call it. It's 11, man. It's already kind of late. We've been running the shows way too long. It used to just be an hour and somehow it turned into two hours. Probably my fault. <laughs> Age of Sigmar, you add another game in and it takes a longer. With any luck, um, and you can relay this to ski is, uh, Hopefully, if things work out right, we're going to have a couple solid rumors or leaks next week. <laughs> he said <laughs> the next week there'll be a couple of solid rumors. Well, we have, don't we have one rumor, John, I sent you? John can hear you, can't you? Yeah, you, yeah. Can, you can hear Ski. So you, you want to go over that rumor? They'll give you a chance to talk so I you know I can just watch you read your lips move. <laughs> you gonna go with the rumor? There oh, is a you. rumor that there might be some more paints coming out from GW. And not and I'm not talking uh, the April Fool's joke dropper bottles. I'm talking about more paints, maybe some slow drying paints. Um, I don't have the rest of my rumor with me, but it's basically some more paints possibly coming out for on the and the games workshop side. Interesting. And I'm not talking like onesies and twosies. I'm talking like a handful of paints. Like a whole new line. Uh, I'm not, I don't know. I don't, I'm not going to say it's a new line. I just what I was told there could be a lot of a big chunk of paints coming out. Um, some old paints coming back. That was another thing he, uh, my rumor told me it was like, for instance, uh, what was one of the old paints that they don't have anymore that we loved? Um, bolt gun metal. So bolt gun, scorpion green. I know we have mute green, but I think scorpion green was a tad brighter. What was TJ's blue midnight blue or something? Something like that. So I think some of those old colors possibly might be coming back. Huh? So, yep. Blending oh, color metallics, too. Yep. yep. So, just Lots something to keep your eye out for. And slow dry paints. Yes. What the hell is slow dry paints? So, you can um, blend them? No, it's just so, like, um, kind of like. Okay, so, real quick. <laughs> Games Workshop paints have. Tyler did say Bolt Gun Metal oh. was the best tasting paint. Oh, great. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> um, but so Games Workshop paints have a lot of pigment, but you have to water them down so they dry quicker because it's water. Okay. And so, for instance, um, Creature Caster paints, they actually take longer to dry, a little bit longer, not much, so you can blend them better. So what I think Games Workshop is starting to pick up is a lot of uh, these good third-party paints that are out there. A lot of people are buying them more, one, because they're cheaper. Two, they don't dry as much so you can blend them better. And so I think Games Workshop's jumping on that bandwagon, possibly. Don't quote me. Salt is required on this um, to help, you know, to get into that side of the market, too. Huh. That's pretty cool. Are, are they going to change their bottle design? I doubt it. I know it's about that time. Because it used to be the... The, war, the variation we're on now, one, two, three, what, third or fourth variation of pot design. Because the testers for these were the old Citadel foundation paints. And they improved those for these. I mean, before, before that, it was the black hexagon. And then before that was the other one. I can't remember the first one. I, I think I threw away my hexagon ones because they're so old. I still have like a handful. And I got like snot yeah. green. Nice. So it's about that time. I can see them changing up again. Look, I have Grafani Sipi. Yes. All right, guys. So uh, since two of my 
co-hosts cannot communicate with each other. Well, we can communicate. We, we're military. Yeah. Yeah, see? He said something really nice. Yep. He said, I liked your beard. <laughs> <laughs> Two words. <laughs> Elbow? Uh -huh. Okay. That, that means something else. Okay. For Arabics. Okay. Yeah, not... Not for Arabics. So, <laughs> yep. Anyways, so good night, everybody. Thank you all. Special thanks to our Patreon supporters as well. And thank you, everyone who participated in chat. Guys, do you have anything else? First, John. Um, watch tomorrow on the FMP Facebook page. About eight o'clock, I'll, or as I get closer to eight o'clock, I'll be announcing or at least giving you a link to where I'll be doing the live show tomorrow. Cool. Ski. Very cool. That was, that was amazing. I, I agree, John. <laughs> Whatever you said was great. Um, <laughs> look for, um, I am still trying to work on Twitch for the Age of Sigmar. We're having some issues with the, the overlays and trying to understand it to get it to work right. Um, also, yeah, that's about it, actually. I'm working on that. And then hopefully everybody's happy and glad that we're doing AOS with this and everybody have a great day or a good night. Well, Depending on what part of the world you're at. Yeah. Leon, right, good, guys. good night.